Song of Solomon, chapter number 2. We're going to read verse number 1. The Bible says, I am the rose of Sharon and the lily of the valleys. Yes. Look at verse number 2. As lilies among thorns, so is my love among the daughters. As the apple tree among the trees of the wood, so is my beloved among the sons. I sat down under his shadow with great delight, and his fruit was sweet to my taste. He brought me to the banqueting house, and his banner over me was love. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you for the good singing, the good testimonies, the good sweet spirit. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. Father, we do pray right now you'd be with those that are working with our children on the other side. May those precious minds, Lord, uh, embrace the truth that is being taught to them. And God, I pray they'd grow in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. And if any haven't been saved, I pray the word of God would lodge, lodge deep in their heart. That Lord, when they reach the age of accountability, the Holy Spirit of God would bring it to their remembrance and they'd be saved. I thank you for those working with our teens. And I pray that you'd... Uh, Certainly put a hedge about them, all the peer pressure and things they're faced with in this wicked world. And God, I pray you'd help our teens, and I pray for them as well. If there be any that aren't saved, that they'd get saved uh, as a result of the word of God. Now, Father, I pray you'd put a hedge about us tonight. I pray that, Lord, you'd just show up big in our midst. And God, you'd speak to our hearts, and God, we'd be left to rejoice and left singing, there's nothing better than Jesus. And until you take us home, you will be found singing and praising and letting folks know how wonderful Jesus is to us. Now, bless now. Continue to help Miss Mary. Thank you for the good report. Be with brother Tony's brother Keith, Lord, and what he's endured these days. And God, uh, I pray especially if he's not saved, he'd get saved. I pray for Brother Tony's aunt as well. I pray for Brother Bobby. You touch him. I do pray, Father, for all those that are sick. The Littles have the flu. The Hensleys are, are sick. And the Handorfs and others, I pray for them. I pray for Chet there in Pennsylvania, Lord, that suffered this uh, uh, stroke on top of the five bypasses. I pray for him. I pray that, Lord, you'd intervene and you'd touch him. Lord, I pray for this little... A uh, uh, baby by the name of Rhett that they found a brain tumor and had to remove. And God, I pray for him and I pray for his family in the days to come. God, you'd give the doctors the wisdom they need. And God, uh, uh, the other request, I pray you'd heed to those. Now, for the next few minutes, meet with us in a big way. We'll thank you for it. Use this unworthy vessel. Lord, help me to say everything you'd have me to say. And Lord, help me not to say anything contrary to your word or your will, and we'll bless you for it. For it's in the wonderful and holy name of the Lord Jesus we ask these things. Amen and amen. I want to draw your attention to verse number one. I want you to notice, first of all, the person mentioned in verse number one. He said, I am. You see that? If you got the right Bible, I's capitalized, and so is am. I'm reminded when Moses was on the backside of the desert tending his father-in-law's sheep uh, and the Lord called him from a burning bush. Uh, and as the Lord began to reveal unto him who he was, uh, Moses asked what his name was. Uh, Brother James, he didn't say, Lord God Almighty. Uh, Brother James, he didn't say, my name's Jesus. Uh, he didn't say uh, 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 any of the many other names he's known by. Uh, uh, great God Jehovah. He didn't say, uh, 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 I'm this or I'm that. He said, I am that I am. And I have found in 48 years, soon to be 49 years of knowing him, he has been the I am for everything that I have ever needed. When I have been low, I am has walked by. When I have been on the mountain, I am has walked by. When I have had a need, the I am has walked in. I have seen him answer prayer. Hey, a week ago, didn't look like it's too good for Miss Mary. Now she's squeezing and moving her foot. Say, how did that happen? The treatment? No, no, no. Hey, doctors and treatments are limited, uh, but there's an unlimited almighty God uh, whose name is I Am that hears and answers prayer. Uh, hey, what a blessing. Uh, I don't know. He's our Lord. Uh, we find the I Am. We see the person. Notice the place. Uh, 
I'm interested in uh, here in verse number one. Uh, he said, I am the rose of Sharon, and here it is, and the lily of the valleys. Uh, 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 we find uh, he mentions that there is some valleys. Uh, and friends, you can't exclude them. Uh, 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 I wish I could tell you uh, uh, that you'll never face any valleys, you'll never face any heartaches, you'll never face any low times, uh, but I'm not going to lie to you tonight. Uh, Job said that man's days are few uh, and for of trouble. Uh, hey, you can live right, do right, be right, be a good neighbor, be a good person, be a good employee. Uh, you can be faithful to God uh, and still face some valleys. Uh, uh, listen, uh, if we never had any valleys, uh, we wouldn't know how good the I am is. Uh, but I've got news for you. Uh, uh, you'll face some valleys. Uh, you'll face some hardships. Uh, you'll face some tragic things. Uh, but if you know the I am, you'll never face them alone. Uh, that that brings us to the promise. Uh, he said, I am the lily uh, of the valley. Uh, uh, listen, every valley you face, uh, uh, get to look around, you'll find the lily blooming in the midst of your valley. Uh, hey, uh, uh, there's been times, Brother Sammy, I didn't know I could put another foot in front of the other. Uh, got to look around, and guess who I ran into? Uh, the lily in my valley. Uh, hey, uh, I found uh, he's bigger than anything I'm facing. Uh, he's great than anything I've ever known. Uh, he is uh, the Prince of Peace and has a peace that passes all understanding. Uh, hey, there's nothing like him. Uh, he's the lily of the valleys. Uh, and with God's help, uh, I want to preach on the lily of the valleys. Uh, now listen, when God gave me this message, I told you it was before the World Wide Web. And I got to read the Word of God, Brother Jim, and I got to interested in the, uh, that lily of the valley and that rose of Sharon. So I went to the library, and Brother James, I checked out a lot of books on flowers. Now listen, back then, people will look at you funny if you check out books on flowers if you're a man. Uh, today, they wouldn't give it a second look. I don't even know, can you even check out books in a library anymore? I don't know, I haven't been to one in a couple decades. But I, I got these books and I got to read and I found out some very interesting things uh, about lilies. Uh, can I say this first of all? Uh, uh, the term lily means uh, a life of beautiful deeds. Uh, a life of beautiful deeds. Uh, can I say this? Uh, that Jesus, the lily of our valley, uh, when he walked among men... Uh, he had a life of beautiful deeds. Uh, hey, one of his disciples said, even if the world, uh, 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 if we wrote down everything that he did, the world couldn't contain the books uh, of all the beautiful deeds he done. Uh, can I say, Jesus made the blind to see. Uh, Jesus uh, opened the ears of the deaf. Uh, Jesus made the lame to walk. He had a life of beautiful deeds. Uh, Jesus took the woman who had an issue of blood for 12 years uh, that no physician could help. Uh, she spent all that she had, uh, but Jesus made her whole. Uh, hey, Jesus, as we read this morning, uh, took a few loaves and fishes and fed a multitude. Uh, and that wasn't the only time he fed a multitude. Uh, hey, he had a life of beautiful deeds. Uh, listen, uh, uh, Jesus cleansed the lepers that Miss Marcy just sang about. Uh, hey, lepers is a picture of sin. Uh, there is no cure for leprosy, uh, but there is a cleansing. Uh, uh, you and I had a sin problem, uh, but Jesus walked by uh, and he cleansed our sins uh, in his own blood. Uh, listen, uh, Jesus healed the sick. Uh, he set the captives free. Uh, hey, there was a man by legion that was possessed with many demons. Uh, nobody could tame him, uh, but hey, they came out and found him seated at the feet of Jesus, uh, clothed and in his right mind. Uh, the Syrophoenician and Phoenician woman, uh, her daughter was possessed by a devil. Uh, she had no right to Jesus. She wasn't a Jew, uh, but her faith touched his heart, uh, and even her daughter uh, was recovered from the demon. Uh, hey, Jesus calms the sea. Uh, Jesus raised the dead. Uh, he raised Lazarus and Jairus' daughter and the widow's son. Uh, hey, uh, I'm talking about a life of beautiful deeds. Uh, 
Jesus told the man uh, with the palsy that was brought in with four uh, laying on his bed, rise and walk, uh, and his palsy was cured. Uh, hey, Jesus uh, uh, told the woman caught in the act of adultery, uh, go and sin no more. Uh, hey, Jesus uh, uh, told the weary, come unto me and I'll give you rest. Uh, I'm telling you, he lived a life of beautiful deeds. Uh, no wonder he said, I'm the lily of your valleys. Well, I got to doing some research on lilies. Can I say I found out some things about li lilies? First of all, I want to mention where lilies are found. It's amazing. Now, there are things that we have here in Kentucky they don't have on the island in St. Lucia. And there are things down there like palm trees and cashew trees and all kinds of beautiful things down there like night creatures. Say, what are those? I don't know. I ask him, what's making that sound at night? Night creatures. Well, what's a night creature? A night creature. I don't know what they are, but they make sounds at night. They have things we don't have. But I found something very interesting about lilies. Uh, can I say lilies are found in pastures where the sheep graze? Uh, the Bible says in uh, 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 Psalm 23, in verse 2, He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Hey, the lily leads us to green pastures, and you'll find him right there in the middle of the pasture with you. Huh? Hey, uh, 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 Matthew 18, 20 says, uh, For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. You'll find the lily amongst the sheep. Uh, in uh, 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 verse number 16 of this same chapter, you find my beloved is mine, uh, and I am his. He feedeth among the lilies. Uh, you'll find him wherever you find sheep grazing. Uh, I'm glad he didn't call us Goats, uh, he called a sheep. Uh, sheep follow. Uh, goats butt. Uh, he said, my sheep uh, hear my voice. They know my voice and they follow me. Uh, hey, uh, a sheep will say, yes, Lord. Uh, a goat says, Brother Ray, uh, but Lord, uh, but preacher, uh, but this. Uh, I'm glad I'm a sheep uh, and not a goat. Uh, hey, listen, uh, goats don't understand the lily. Uh, they don't understand about the Lord Jesus. Uh, they just want to make him out to be a man. Uh, hey, he's the God man. Uh, he's all God uh, and all man. Uh, he didn't live his life uh, and became God. Uh, he's always been God. Uh, John said in John chapter 1, In the beginning was the Word, uh, and the Word was in the beginning. What was he? Uh, he's always been. He's been with the Father. Uh, hey, uh, the Lord of all glory. Uh, stepped out of glory one day into the womb of a virgin maid and was born uh, and became flesh uh, that he might redeem us from sinful flesh. Uh, he became like us so we can become like him because he's the lily of the valleys. Uh, you find him in pastures where sheep graze. Can I say this? You also find him among the thorns. Look again in verse number 2. Where do you find the lily? You find him in pastures where sheep graze. But you also find him among thorns, as the lily among thorns. So is my love among daughters. He's not only in the good places. You'll find him in the hard places. He's among the thorns. Proverbs 22, 5 says this, Thorns and snares are in the way of the froward. You'll find thorns and snares everywhere, but you'll also find lilies where you find thorns. Uh, can I say this? Lilies are in the valley. We find it right here. Uh, there's never a hard time you'll go through that you won't find a lily. Mm, he's there. What a blessing. I also found this out. You'll find lilies wherever vegetation grows and wherever you'll find man. If you can find man there, lilies will grow there. If vegetation grows, you'll find lilies there. That means wherever man has a need, you'll find him. Huh? Huh? Listen, David said it this way in Psalm 139, Whither shall I go from thy spirit? Or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. Uh, hey, uh, he's an omnipresent Lord. Uh, he's everywhere all the time. Uh, you can't get away from the lily. Uh, you'll find him everywhere. What a blessing, huh? We not only find... Uh, uh, about where lilies are found. I found some other things about lilies. 
There's something called the Madonna lily. The Madonna lily is the one we most associate with Easter. It's a white, pure white lily. And everybody sees those at Easter, and everybody loves those pure white lilies. Those are called Madonna lilies. And again, it's a picture of the Lord Jesus. It's pure white. Can I say? He was pure. He's holy. And can I say he had a pure pattern? In Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15 says, For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, uh, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Can I say, uh, Jesus never sinned. That's how I know he wasn't a man. Man, men are sinners. We were conceived in iniquity, and in sin our mother brought us forth. Uh, we sin by nature, we sin by practice, we sin by choice. Uh, uh, there's none that do it good, no, not one. Uh, uh, we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. Uh, uh, the reason Jesus was born of a virgin, uh, a baby gets its blood from the Father, uh, he came from glory. Uh, my dear friends, he came to this world as flesh, uh, but not sinful flesh like you and I, Brother Clint. The life of the flesh is in the blood. And his blood was royal, redeeming blood. Uh, but can I say, he had a pure pattern. He was tempted in all points like us, yet he was without sin. Brother James, we can have confidence in him because he's not a sinner. He's a holy God. Uh, I bless his name. Uh, not only did he have a pure pattern, he had a pure, pure pronunciation. His word. Psalms chapter 12, verse 6, The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in the furnace of earth, purified seven times. A lot of people look at this as just a book. It's not a book. It's the Word of God. You say, well, if it's the Word of God, how come God didn't pin it down? He did. The Bible says that God used holy men of old to pin down His Word. You say, what does that mean? That means the... Men that God chose to pin down His Word was the pen or the instrument in His hand. But it was the Holy Ghost that wrote the Word of God. This book's alive. This book changes lives. Uh, this book is pure as God is pure. Uh, uh, listen, uh, if I didn't believe with every fiber of my being the Word of God was without error, and it was infallible, and it was uh, 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 not only delivered, but uh, 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 it's been protected and it's been delivered to us by the hand of God, uh, I'd close up shop and go home tomorrow. And the Bible makes it clear we're begotten again by incorruptible seed. If this is just a book, we're all on our way to hell. You say, Preacher, I don't believe in hell. How convenient. Hmm. Bottom line is, Jesus preached twice as much about hell as he ever did heaven. Uh, the rich man that died and went to hell even said, Send somebody tell my brothers not to come to this awful place. Hmm. I'm thankful that we have a pure word. You know why I know man didn't write the Bible? Because it tells us of all the faults of man. If man wrote the Bible, it would tell us how great man is and how we don't need God and how you can become God by yourself. And by the way, that's what the cults teach. Uh, if you do enough deeds and enough things in your life, you can elevate yourself to the status of God. Well, if that's the case, Jesus Christ wouldn't have had to come. Hmm. But can I say, man's not getting any better. We're getting more and more degenerate. Hmm. So we find that he had pure word. He had a pure plan. Luke 19.10 hmm. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which is lost. Brother Ray, aren't you glad when you was driving that 57 Chevy that morning that he met with you and he saved you in that car? Huh? Wasn't that a blessing? Aren't you glad he came seeking you? Huh? Brother Donald, I wasn't smart enough to seek him. Oh, I'd been in church all my life, but I wasn't seeking God. Huh? I've heard people say, I went to church looking for girls. I've heard people say, I went to church seized my conscience. Uh, I was one of them had a drug problem. I got drugged to church whether I wanted to go or not. Huh? I was sitting back there minding my own business. 
And he came seeking for me the third Saturday night of March 1974. Uh, he revealed unto me the direction I headed wasn't the right way, uh, that he was the right way. Uh, and that night I got gloriously born again and he changed my life forevermore. Uh, and I junked this world and a thousand more like it for what I have in Jesus. Uh, he had a perfect plan. Because we weren't smart enough in our own integrity and our own sin to even think about God, let alone get to Him. He came seeking us. Huh? Can I say this? Uh, uh, he has a pure purpose. Ephesians 5 says in verse 26, that He might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word that he might present it talking about his church uh, to himself a glorious church not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing but that it should be holy and without blemish people say brother Doug why you preach so hard because preaching is the only thing going to keep us straight and get us straightened for when he comes because he's coming back for a church without blemish it cracks me up. Some of you all that have come in the last year that have been looking for church, you come and you say, boy, I like how you tell it straight. Well, I don't know any other way. I've only been doing it this way about 35 years. But you know why I preach it straight? You know why I don't really, you know, I don't want to offend people, but I really don't give a rip about people and what they think. It's because I know Jesus is coming back for a pure church. And I'm going to give an account to him not to you to him for everything I've ever preached and can I say listen to me I bless his name he has a pure purpose and he wants to knock all the I mentioned this morning about that water going over them rocks to make them smooth I don't know how long and how many gallons of water had to go over them rocks to make them smooth but thanks be unto God when David needed them stones they were smooth huh and can I say that's what the washing of the water of the Word of God does. It knocks the rough edges off of us. Uh, so when our heavenly shepherd comes by and needs us, uh, we're fit to be used of him. Uh, just like uh, when I asked Brother James to sing a song, had no idea what he'd sing, and he sang, uh, ain't nothing better than Jesus. What am I preaching on tonight? There ain't nothing better than Jesus. Uh, our lily, huh? Amen. Can I say, what a blessing that Madonna lily is pure. And I say he's got a pure place. In John chapter 14, he said, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. Huh? What a blessing. He's got a pure place. Now, this blows my mind, Brother Sammy. Let me come preach to you. You need it. Listen. Think about this. This blows my little pea brain in here. Since the alpha of time, before there ever was time, God's always been. Yes. Now, he's had his throne in the sides of the north. Everything is below him. Yes. But where his abode has been, since there ever has ever been, he said, it isn't good enough for my bride. And he's preparing a new heaven. How about And a new earth. Shoot. And a new Jerusalem. And we're going to be the first people to ever step foot on it. Can you Glory. imagine? What a Savior. How about that? What a pure place. Huh? Hey, I can read in Job where the devil goes before the throne of God to accuse the brethren. But when we get to New Jerusalem, the devil's already going to be in the lake of fire. Hallelujah. He's never been where we're going to go. Think about Hallelujah. that. Huh? What a blessing. What a Savior. Huh? He's the Madonna lily. But in all them flower books, Brother Phil, that I've checked out, I found out something else. There's another lily called the Martagon lily. Now, the Martagon lily is a little different. Can I say it's very rare? Matter of fact, the only place you'll find it is in the Holy Lands. And it's very prevalent in Nazareth. We know that when... Mary and Joseph fled because of the, uh, the slaughter, the innocents in Herod. They went to Nazareth. And Jesus was commonly referred to as Jesus of Nazareth. The only place you find the Martagon lilies, Nazareth, in the Holy Lands. Uh, but can I say it's also very distinguished because of its color. 
Look at the Song of Solomon, chapter 5. Look with me. I want to show you something. <clears throat> I love the Bible. The greatest commentary on the Bible is the Bible. Look at verse number 13. This is the Shunammite maid describing Solomon, but it's also describing our Lord. Look what it says. His cheeks are as a bed of spices, as sweet as flowers. Now, here it is. His lips like lilies. Now, I don't know about you, but if I run into somebody who has lips that are white, I'm a little freaked out about that. Uh, that person definitely got a problem. Huh? And I don't know. I don't want what he's got. No, his lips are like lilies, it says. And the mother got lily, what distinguishes it is its color. It is scarlet in color. And can I say, uh, not only was Jesus a Madonna lily, he was pure, uh, he was without sin, uh, he had a life of beautiful deeds, and he put perfect things in place. Uh, but can I say, uh, 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 he became... Uh, our scarlet robe. Uh, the Bible says in Matthew 27 and 28, and they stripped him uh, and put on him a scarlet robe. Uh, that was a robe for you and for me. Uh, that was a robe that was to mock uh, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, my dear friends, uh, he became our substitute uh, and our sacrifice. Uh, he died a, die a death that we should have died. Uh, hey, we should have died, uh, been crucified and sent to hell uh, but he died our death uh, he took upon him our sin uh, he became our sacrifice uh, uh, the Bible says in Isaiah 118 uh, uh, come now let us reason together saith the Lord uh, though your sins be as scarlet they shall be white as snow uh, though they be like red like crimson uh, they shall be as wool uh, hey uh, he took our scarlet our sins upon him uh, the Lord laid on him the iniquity of us all. Uh, he who knew no sin became sin, uh, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Uh, he took our scarlet robe. Uh, friend, he took our death. Uh, the Bible says in Isaiah 53 and 5, but he was wounded for our transgressions. Uh, he was bruised for our iniquities. Uh, the chastisement of our peace was upon him. Uh, and with his stripes we are healed. Uh, hey, John 12 24 says uh, verily verily I say to you except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die uh, it abideth alone uh, but if it die uh, it bringeth forth much fruit uh, he died uh, to bring forth you and I and birth us into the family of God uh, I bless his holy name uh, he took our sins upon his body uh, he took our death uh, listen uh, at death uh, he was buried in a garden tomb. Uh, listen, you never plant anything in a garden. You don't expect it to come back up. Uh, and on that third and appointed day, uh, under his own power, uh, he conquered death, hell, and the grave and rose again. Uh, what separates us from every false religion? Uh, hey, we have a living Savior uh, who is Lord of Lord uh, and King of Kings. Uh, can I say that... My that Martagon lily took our hell. Revelation 1, 18 says, I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. He conquered hell and death so men don't have to go there. And the reason we preach the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord, is let people don't have to die in their sin. They can be saved from their sin. Whosoever believeth on the Lord shall be saved. Uh, you can be saved from your sin. You don't have to die and go to hell. Because he took your hell. Can I say one of these days, hell is going to be thrown in the lake of fire, which is worse than hell. And there people will pay their own sins forevermore because they didn't trust in the Lord. Now there are folks who say, well, I don't believe that. Well, the, the re reality of it is this. Brother Bob, if I'm wrong... I've lost nothing. If they're wrong, they've lost it all. Hmm? I'd rather just trust the Lord. And there's not only the Madonna lily and the Martagon lily, 
There's something interesting I found out about lilies. Those things we put out for Easter are just hybrids. Original lilies grew to be, Brother Phil, Brother Thad, four feet to six feet tall, and they drooped over. And the only way you can see their beauty is you've got to bow before them. And can I say, hearing about Jesus won't do anything for you. Huh? Thinking about Jesus won't do anything for you. The only way you're ever going to see the beauty of Jesus and understand the lily is you've got to bow before him and look up and see his glory. Huh? Huh? Oh, bless his holy name. That night, when I made my way to the altar, and I bowed myself before him, I had no idea what was in store for me. My granddaddy said, son, are you satisfied? I can say, nearly 50 years later, I'm still satisfied in what I met in him that night. There ain't nobody could ever do for me what Jesus did for me. No one ever cared for me like Jesus. Jesus did for me. Uh, hey, I bless his holy name. Uh, and I bless the day uh, that I bowed before him and made him the Lord of my life. Uh, oh, there's nothing like him. If you've ever seen a lily, you know inside it they've got those little yellow anthers. They're called little hammers of gold. Can I say that those little hammers of gold are important because gold adorns, but Christ adorns much greater. He robes us in His righteousness. I no longer stand before Him in my own righteousness, my own faults and failures. Uh, when He sees me, He don't see my faults and failures. Uh, he sees me robed in His righteousness. Uh, when He looks at me, He sees Himself. Uh, can I say gold will buy one's way into earthly places, uh, but Christ, hallelujah, brings us into heavenly places. Uh, hey, uh, He's the only way to heaven. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Uh, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Uh, there's not many roads that lead to heaven. Uh, there's one way to heaven, and His name is Jesus. Uh, listen, gold meets requirements for this life, uh, but Christ equips for eternal life. Uh, gold settles quarrels between men. Uh, Christ settles the quarrel between God and man. Uh, I was in enmity with God uh, until I trusted in Jesus. Uh, hey, gold saves from a life of discomfort, uh, but Christ saves uh, from an eternal lake of fire. Uh, I bless the Lord uh, for those little hammers, those hammers of gold. Uh, and then there's the aroma of lilies. Now listen, it's a sweet scent. It's a myrrh-like perfume. Look again in chapter 5 and verse 13. Listen, listen what she says. His cheeks are as a bed of spices, as sweet as flowers. His lips like lilies dropping sweet-smelling myrrh. He gives forth an aroma that this world doesn't understand. Can I say this? In order to smell a lily, it must be broken. And until Jesus became broken bread and poured out wine on the cross, we never could get a scent of what He really did for us. Now, I know you've heard the illustration. This is where I got it. Back in the old country, they would hunt with dogs. They'd hunt foxes. They'd hunt deer. And I'm told, Brother Rod, I read this in one of them flower books. I'm told that it's instinctive in deer that they know if they get to a lily patch, the scent of the lilies will throw off the dogs. And friend, hallelujah, when the hounds of hell are on our trail, no, it looks like we're going down for the last time. All we got to do is get to the lily. Hey, just his scent will throw them off. One side of our lily brings great protection and love. Now listen. The only way he'll become your lily and my lily, our will must be broken in submission to smell him. The psalmist said in Psalms 51, 17, The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, 
a broken and a contrite heart, O God, thou wilt not despise. Listen to me, I'm about done. Our will's broken by the Scriptures. Jeremiah said in Jeremiah 23, 29, Is not my word like as a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces? You know why some people don't like preaching? It gets too close to the heart. God chose through the foolishness of preaching to save them that would believe. God didn't choose through a nice little simple little make you feel good little thing. He chose through the preaching of the Word of God. Because the Word of God, it breaks the hardness of our hearts. Those things that we have built up through self-denial and through self-existence and through pride and ego, it takes the Word of God to break that. Our will is broken by the Scriptures. Our will is broken by the Spirit of God. We call it conviction. When people get under conviction, they don't act right. Sometimes they'll get mean and nasty. They don't even know why they're mean and nasty. Sometimes they'll find themselves thinking and doing things they normally wouldn't do because God's dealing with their heart and they don't understand it. He's breaking their will. He also uses surrounding conditions. There are some times that we go through trials. God knows how to put us through something to break our will. But Bob, it'd be much better if when God gets dealing with us, we just submit to him, but we're human. And sometimes he has to break our will, and he has to put certain things in our lives to break our will, so we'll quit looking around and look to him. But then I found that sometimes he uses suffering to break our will. I've seen many people walk away from God only to later have to go through sufferings and regret they'd ever walked away. Uh, listen, let me make this statement. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter number 12 that if we're without chastisement, that we're a bastard, not a son. God chastens his children just like we chasten our children. Well, like they used to chasten children. Now they don't chasten children anymore. They let children do whatever they want. Uh, but listen, hear me well, Brother Clint. God doesn't chasten the devil's children. No, he chastens his own. He say, that's cruel that God would put somebody through suffering. Well, God causes chastisement to come into our life because he loves us. And he doesn't leave us to our own conceit. Listen to what the psalmist said in Psalm 51, verse 6. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts. And in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. What happens when discipline's done right, and chastisement's done right, it doesn't bring bitterness and anger and envy. What it does is it brings love and appreciation. The psalmist said, Lord, I desire truth in the inward parts Wash me and make me clean that these broken bones that you've caused in my life will turn to joy. And can I say, rejoicing comes when our will is broken. I said all that to say this. He's the lily of the valleys. Why would we want to look anywhere else? You're going to face some valleys. But I'm glad I found a lily in my valley, Aunt Lynn. I haven't told this story very often. I'm going to tell this story. Back about 30 years ago, this young preacher, Miss Annette was pregnant with Jordan. I went to help a great uncle of mine who had a mission church. His health was kind of on the decline. And he heard me preach, and he asked me if I'd come and help him. And so Miss Annette and I went and helped him. We felt that was the will of the Lord, and we went and helped him. Got down there and just started going out, and a lot of people had come to church had left, and 
and just start visiting them, trying to invite them back. And he basically, Brother Sammy said, look, I know I'm the mission pastor, but he said, I want you to treat this like your church. You do all the preaching. You do what you feel is led to do. And so we did. We did all the preaching. Start inviting everybody. I mean, we started. It was my uncle, his wife, and me and Annette. And Annette and Jordan was almost ready. And so we were, we were just got busy. And within a few weeks, a lot of folks started coming back. And within a couple months, we was running about 80 people. The Lord was blessing. I thought, boy, we need to have revival meeting. So I made an announcement. We're going to have revival meeting and. And I'm praying for the man of God. God would have come preach revival. And when God lets me know, I'll let you know. Well, before I went down there, Brother Jim, to help him, I had a, a commitment to preach a homecoming for a dear friend of mine up in the Cincinnati area. And so I let him know I, I, I'll not be here this Sunday morning. I'll be up there preaching that homecoming service. I said, Lord willing, I'll get back for Sunday night. We got back Sunday night, and the near 80-something people was coming, left again. We're down to about 12. All because my great-uncle's wife couldn't stand it that she didn't get to pick who was going to get to come and preach a revival me. And caused a big scene that morning. They all said, things haven't changed around here. It's just like it was before. We're gone. And the Lord said, you're done there. And we went back defeated. See, you all think I'm bold now. You should know me then. I didn't have any sense then. And Brother Clint, I was ready to take on anybody or anything. But what the Lord taught me when you study the whole armor of God, there's nothing for the back. And I felt like I got knifed in the back. And I was ready to quit. You all would have never heard of me. My children have probably never been raised in church. They've been raised around church. Went back and defeated. Lord of snakes, Bill. I ain't did. and learned a new song. She got up and sang, he'll do it again. And God broke my heart. Let me know they didn't stab me in the back. They stabbed him in the back. That I was just to be a vessel. You say, what happened? He became the lily in my valley. And friend, I've never looked back. Tonight, what you need above all else is to know the lily. So when your valley comes, you'll find him precious to your soul. Because there's nobody like him. Tonight, do you know the lily of the valley? If not, I highly recommend him. People let you down. He never will. Matter of fact, he'll be there to pick you up when you get knocked down. Because he's the lily. He's the life of beautiful deeds. And when he gets finished with you, you'll look back. And see, his hand was on you all the way through. Do you know him? If not, I highly recommend you put your faith in him. If you don't know him, you can tonight. But if you do know him, don't stray too far from him. There's come today. You're going to need him. Let's all stand. Brother Ray, come get a song of invitation while they're picking out a song. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the word of God. It's a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Lord, the, the Holy Spirit takes the Word of God and illuminates our minds to truth. 
You even said he would lead us and guide us into all truth. And thank you for the truths that we've learned about the lily. God, it amazes me throughout the Bible. You take natural things to show how great and hidden heavenly things there are all around us. Now, Father, I pray, Lord, you'd help your people. Lord, I don't know what tomorrow holds, but I know there are valleys in our lives just around the next bend or over the next mountain. Lord, I pray. Lord, like you have so many times in my life, you show up as the lily in their valley. And Lord, help them to embrace your truths. And help them, Lord, to see your great hand of grace. Lord, I shudder to think if there's anybody here tonight that doesn't know you, that tonight would be the night. The lily becomes their lily. Now, Father, speak in this invitation. Touch hearts and help us to rejoice in the goodness of God. We'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Did you know that IBC is now on iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and Google Play? Head on over to your podcast provider and subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.